Hi, I'm Nikki from Find Me Crafting. We are coming up on spooky season, so of course I have to dress up my marshmallow mugs, right? I've got the candy corn, the adorable, cute, very bright and fun candy corn. And I know that people either love it or hate the actual candy. And if so far you haven't gotten on the candy corn bandwagon, you really need to try mixing candy corn and peanuts. It is life changing. And if you'd like something a little more, I don't know, traditional, fun, classy, I've got the cute little pumpkin. Oh, come on, either of these are definitely going to dress up your marshmallow mug for fall. And if you're crocheting along with me, we've only got two more months left so that we have a full year of marshmallow mug hats. Come on, I'll show you how. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any new patterns or projects. The free pattern for both of these hats is available on my website. I'll put the link in the description box down below. And I just want to start by telling you about the candy corn hat. This hat is just, it starts with a magic circle up here at the top. And if you struggle with magic circles or don't know what I'm talking about, I'm gonna put a link up at the top here for a video to show you how to do a magic circle. And then the rest is just doing rounds where you increase, which is just adding stitches to each round. And I have a video for that. If you want some help with that, that'll also be up in the top corner. And you're gonna increase until you get to 32 stitches and then just do 32 stitches for a number of rows till it's long enough and you finish this last row here just by slip stitching around that just makes it a little bit tighter here around the mug and this pattern is also very beginner friendly and i just want to walk you through some of the steps of making the cute little pumpkin hat i'm going to be using a g four millimeter hook and i will be using hobby lobby's i love this yarn in burnt pumpkin all we need to do is make a slip knot. I'm going to tighten that up. Put my hook on. I am going to chain 19. So one, two, three. We are going to make a long rectangle. That is the goal to make this hat, believe it or not. And I am going to, starting in the second chain from the hook, so Here's where my hook will be in this loop. There's the first chain. This is the second chain from the hook. That's where I'm going to start this row. And I'm going to do a half double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, go into that second chain from the hook, pull up a loop. I have three loops on my hook, yarn over and pull through. That's one half double crochet. I'm going to continue doing half double crochets just like that until I get to the start of my chain. So I'll have 18 half double crochets. When you get to the end of the row, you have your 18 half double crochets. I'm just going to chain two, turn my work, and now I'm going to be working in row two. I'm going to literally do the exact same thing. I'm just going to do half double crochets, but I am going to work them in the back loop only. So typically when we're making a stitch, we would go under both loops. This would be my first one. If I move farther down so you can see it a little better, those two loops on the top, that V, you normally go underneath both of those. So this is the front loop, the one closest to you. The back loop, the one we're going to work in, is this one farther away from you. So when you're doing your stitch, you're going to go down kind of through the middle and underneath that back loop to work the whole stitch. So let me show you. So I'm going to yarn over because I'm doing a half double crochet. I'm going to go down through the middle and under that back loop. I'm going to pull up a loop. I have three loops on. Yarn over, pull through. I'm going to do it again. So I yarn over. Go down through the middle and under just the back loop. Pull up a loop, here's three on. Yarn over, pull through. And I'm gonna do that again to the end of this row. So 18 half double crochets in the back loop only. Once again, at the end of the row, I'm going to chain two. And I just wanted to show you that what you're going to see is kind of this little ridge. What you're seeing is the front loop that you're not working. So I'm going to turn my work because I just chained two and I'm just going to repeat that row where you do a half double crochet in the back loop only. And I'm going to do that until I reach 24 rows. So there's row one right here and row two. When I get to 24 rows, I'm done making the body of the hat. With 24 rows done, I'm not going to cut off my yarn. I'm going to leave it attached. I did just chain one over here. And I'm now going to fold this in half and I'm going to tighten up my yarn here and I'm going to single crochet through this side and this side. 
So I'm going to go down underneath both of the loops of this, the side that's closest to me, and through both of the loops on the other side. I'm going to pull up a loop and then pull it through both of those stitches. I have two loops on, yarn over and pull through. So I'm going to do it again in the next one. So I'm going to go underneath these two loops, underneath the loops on the other side. There might not be two, it's just one because it's part of the chain that we started with, but I'm going to yarn over and pull it through both of these two loops on yarn over and pull through and I'm just going to do this down the side to attach it so it's a tube it's all closed and I am going to cut myself a fairly long tail I do like to cut myself more yarn than I will ever possibly need but I just get myself a nice long tail I'm going to finish off by just pulling this through and now I want to flip this right side out. You can see this is this is the ridge you end up with when you single crochet through. So I'm just going to flip it over. And now you can't see it at all. It's completely hidden. It looks just like every other section. But I do want to close one end of it. I'm going to close this end because this is the end that my yarn is attached to. Using a yarn needle, I am just going to put that on. And I'm going to weave around the top so I can close it. So I'm kind of on the inside here. That's where my yarn has ended. So I'm going to come out underneath some of these, one of these uh, end loops and you pull that through and then you're going to go back in and then come out and in and out. And this is going to tighten up and close the top. So it looks like a little beanie. So I'm on the inside and I'm going to come out and I'm just going to go all the way around until I get back to where I started. Closing it up and you tighten it and you pull on it, that tightens it up and most of the hole will be closed. I do like to finish it off by going, you know, just under some stitches. Ooh, that sounds like it ripped a little. <laughs> and I'm going to go across and tighten up. And it is loosening a little bit because I stopped putting tension on it. But as you go across this way, it's going to tighten and stay tightened. So I'm just going to go across this way, tighten a little. And then I'm going to cross the other way just so that this hole is completely closed, completely secure. With the hat completely closed, I'm going to just weave this end in. First, I'm going to knot it. I'm going to go underneath some stitches. And with the loop I have here, I'm just going to take my needle through the loop and knot it. And now I'm just going to weave in my ends on the inside so that they're hidden. All that's left to do for the main body of the hat is roll your brim up. So I just roll it up this little bit, whatever looks good on your marshmallow mug. So I like to test it out, put it on, see how much I like to roll it up, how it fits. I can probably go up a little bit more. And the body of the hat is done. Now, to make the stem, I have this. This is my first one. I like to use actual stems because I like the difference in texture between the yarn and, you know, like anything else. So this stick. So you can go out, you can take like a trimmer. I use a tool called a lopper and I trim the bushes in my backyard. That's literally how I get most of my sticks. So, you know, go outside, <laughs> find a stick. Um, you can actually buy some. Amazon has some. This bag, actually, my mom purchased for me at the Dollar Tree. I've never actually seen them at my Dollar Tree, but they did have just little stems. You could use something like this if you can find this at any sort of craft store or Amazon. I do also have some instructions on the pattern for making a little stem like this with just some brown yarn. And it is basically just a little rectangle. It's the same process as the hat. You're going to make just a little rectangle with the brown yarn. You're going to single crochet through the sides to attach it and just close up one end. And I tightened this end a little bit so it looked a little bit pointier, but that's all you have to do to make a stem. So that is also in the pattern on my website. And I'm just going to hot glue that here in the top. You could sew it, but if you've watched any of my other videos, you know I absolutely hate sewing. I will avoid it at all costs. So I'm just gonna hot glue that bad boy right there on the top. I also want to make this curly Q vine that I wanna attach to the top of the pumpkin. That is made with Hobby Lobby I Love This Yarn in Dark Olive. And for this, I'm going to be using an E 3.5 millimeter hook. So what I want to do is I want to make these curly cues, but I also need it to be fairly flat right here so that I can tie it around my stem and then curly cue again. With a slip knot on, I'm going to chain 39. One, two, three. 
To make it curl, I'm going to start in the second chain from the hook. So here's the first chain, here's the second right here. I'm going to start there and I'm going to do three single crochets all in that same stitch. So I go underneath, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through, that's one. In the same stitch, I'm going to go back under, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through, that's two, and one more in this same stitch. And there's three. I'm going to do that for 12 total. So that was my first one. I'm going to do 11 more, just like that, where I put three single crochets into each stitch, and that's going to form the first curly Q part. Little tip for making these. You can obviously count all of your stitches, or as you go, it kind of leaves this opening at the bottom. You can count those. It's actually easiest, I find, just to count ahead of time. So here's the 12th I've counted. This is the 12th stitch that I want to do it in. I'm going to mark the 13th so I know to stop there. And if you'd like, I can, I'll put a link up above for a video if you want to make adorable little stitch markers like these gummy bears. They're very easy, super cute. And so now I'm just going to do three single crochets in each of these stitches until I get to the one that I've marked. At this point, I want it to be flatter so I can tie it. So I'm going to remove my stitch marker. In the next 12 stitches, I'm gonna do just one single crochet. So under the loop, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through, that's one. I'm just gonna do 12 just like that to make the flat area. My flat section is ready to go, and I am just going to continue on doing three single crochets into each of the remaining stitches. I wanted to point out that I wanted my curly cues to be slightly different lengths so that they were a little offset on top of my pumpkin. So this curly cue will be just a tiny bit smaller than this other side. Of course, when you get to the end, you can just clip off your yarn and finish it off. And I'm just going to tie these two ends together and weave in my ends. I tied my vine around the bottom of the crocheted stem, quite near the bottom. I've kind of pulled it down so it's down near the bottom and retwisted it a little bit. And now I'm just gonna hot glue this onto the top of my hat. I do like to put it on the marshmallow mug first so that it's, you know, it's holding it flat and steady exactly where I want it. And I'm just gonna hot glue that right there. Once that cools, your pumpkin hat is done. Get those marshmallow mugs dressed for spooky season. If you want to complete a year's worth of mug hats for a full set, all of the patterns are available for free on my website. Happy crafting.